crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal, with instant scores and feedback for all the tasks. Along with the practice questions, access free sectional and full mock tests, and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies, and proven templates, click the link below and subscribe to our video course today. There are some 250 million cars in America. 250 million cars in the country with just over 300 million people. And most of those vehicles, of course, are gas-powered. This poses a huge challenge given the limited supplies of oil and the growing urgency of the global warming crisis. But there is good news, according to our guests today. And that is we have the know-how and the technology to build sleek, fast automobiles that don't use gasoline. These vehicles of tomorrow are powered by hydrogen, electricity, biofuels, and digital technology, and they already exist. So what's stopping us from putting them on the roads? Our guests today will help answer that. Higher interest rates have knocked investors' confidence in putting their money into property. Evidence suggests the insurance company Standard Life says that the rate rises since last summers have led more people to question the wisdom of property investment. So a virus is something that you can't see by normal light microscopy. You need very advanced techniques for electron microscopy to see it, but that virus is not able to reproduce itself without a host and us as human beings are made up of lots of different cell types and we are interested in understanding at the molecular level how that virus infects the liver and why does it infect the liver and it doesn't infect the heart or it doesn't infect other tissues. Financial market swung wildly yesterday in frenzied trading market by further selling of equities and fears about an unraveling of the global carry trade. At the same time trading in the European credit markets in London was exceptionally heavy as traders frantically reassessed their appetite for risk prompting wild swings in the prices of the key derivatives. It was the third day of frenetic activity in the European credit markets, suggesting that equity market swings were prompting a wider repositioning of investors in a host of asset classes. It all started last spring when the Food and Drug Administration placed a black box warning on some popular anemia drugs. The labels warn against using the drugs in cancer patients with relatively mild anemia resulting from chemotherapy. The FDA says the drugs clearly shorten survival and speed the progression of cancer. In people with slightly worse anemia, the drugs might have the same effects. To Barry Straub, Medicare's chief medical officer, the message was clear. T. 
Teamwork can also lead to inconsistency, a common cause of poor sales. In the case of a smartphone that a certain company launched, one director wanted to target the business market, and another demanded it was aimed at consumers. The company wanted both directors to be involved, so gave the product a consumer-friendly name, but marketed it to companies. The result was that it met the needs of neither group. It would have been better to let one director or the other has his way, not both. Now industriousness or hard work. It's easy to mock people who say they work hard. According to the Roman Catholic Church individuals of the purest faith remain in a lifelike state after deaths, their bodies resist decomposition for centuries. Numerous cases were found in which people have been exhumed years after their deaths and were found preserved. The Church viewed this as a measure of sanctity and incorruptible people whose bodies miraculously resist decay were canonized by the Church. Incorruptibility became a component of canonization the process of becoming sainted. This process of canonization included the prospective saint appearing in visions to people after death, performing miracles, either after or during life and incorruptibility of their dead bodies. A recent World Bank research revealed that automation will disrupt the pattern of the traditional economic path, from productive agriculture stage to light manufacturing stage, and then to full-scale industrialization stage, and increase job losses in developing countries, particularly in India. In an effort to send a strong signal to the world, and Israeli society, that the Palestinians are for peace and appreciate the efforts of statesmen, like Shimon Peres, Mr. Mohammed Abbas, the Prime Minister of Palestine has decided to attend the funeral of Mr. Shimon Peres. Mr. Shimon Peres was buried at Mount Herzl, Israel's national cemetery according to his own funeral plan in the presence of large numbers of foreign dignitaries, and under unprecedented. Upper Air Laboratory. Bangalore has upgraded the pilot balloon PB observatories at Gangtok, Pune and Ritnagira into GPS-based radio sounding RS, radio wind RW observatories. Previously these PB stations were observing upper air profile of wind direction and wind speed employing optical theodolite manually. After upgradation, these stations will capable of getting upper air profile of temperature, humidity, pressure, geo-potential height, wind direction and wind speed automatically to 35 km height. There have been many studies in America of the opinions and behavior of university lecturers and professors, and of well-known, free, or public thinkers, who are not attached to a university or other institution, which show that those who are recognized as being more successful or productive as scholars in their field, or are at the best universities, are much more likely to have critical opinions. That is to say that they are more likely to hold liberal views, in the American use of that word than those of their colleagues, who are less creative or who have less of a reputation, 
the better a university is, as measured by the test results of its students or by the prestige of its staff, the more likely it has been that there will be student unrest and a relatively left of center faculty. Are you studying anything new these days? Well, I have started to study about astronomy. Oh cool. Yeah, I really like stars. Me too. They are really pretty. I like to watch stars at night at my house, because there is really less light, but I do not know about the constellations. So, is there anything that you have been studying these days? Recently started to study cooking. Cooking. The spinal cord, the link between the brain and the body, is a band of nervous tissue about the thickness of your little finger that runs through the backbone. Nerve cells called motor neurons convey electric impulses that travel from the brain to the spinal cord, branching off at the appropriate point and passing to the various parts of the body. Similarly, sensory neurons transmit messages from organs and tissues via the spinal cord to the brain, but the spinal cord also functions without the brain having to intervene. It alone controls those actions called spinal reflexes that need to be carried out very fast in response to danger. Paper was first manufactured in Europe by the Spanish in the 12th century, although it had been imported since the 10th century. Around the year 1276, a mill was established at Fabriano in Italy. The town became a major center for papermaking and throughout the 14th century provided most of Europe with fine quality paper, which it has continued to produce ever since. By the 15th century, Paper was also being manufactured in Germany and France, and it was not long before both countries became almost completely independent of material bought overseas. With the increasing availability of paper in Europe, the production of identical printed pictures became almost inevitable. Before farming was introduced into Scotland, people jived by hunting, fishing, and gathering wild foodstuffs. This way of life meant that they usually didn't settle permanently in one place, but were to an extent nomadic, moving about in search of a livelihood, perhaps returning to the same places at certain times of the year. It is believed that the islands of Orkney were known to these people, but, so far, only a few tools have been found to verify this. This is because coastal erosion has destroyed many ancient sites and these may have contained relics of some of this earliest pioneering colonists. Land reclamation has been carried out along the coast of Tokyo Bay since the Meiji period. Areas along the shore with a depth of fewer than 5 meters are simplest to carry out landfills, and sand from the floor of Tokyo Bay is used for these projects. The topography of the shoreline of Tokyo Bay differs greatly from that of the pre-modern period due to ongoing land reclamation projects. 
Tokyo Bay includes about 249 square kilometers of reclaimed land area in 2012. Aggregate household waste production is enormous in Greater Tokyo. There is little room for traditional garbage disposal sites, waste is rigorously sorted at the household. Much of it is turned into ash and further recycled into bay landfill. Understanding migration was conceived in response to numerous requests from educators and curriculum specialists concerning the presentation and discussion of issues related to human migration in the social studies classroom. What are the reasons that large groups of people have found themselves moving from place to place? What effects does this movement have? And most importantly, how can such a fluid and nebulous concept be presented in a classroom in an easy-to-follow manner with clear lesson objectives and outcomes? Regional case studies were chosen to address these and other essential questions. Where possible, we have used primary source documents to present the information in each case study. Well, in 2004, we integrated ticketing in Southeast Queensland, so we have introduced a paper ticket that allowed you to travel across all the three modes in Southeast Queensland, so bus, train and ferry, and the second stage of integrated ticketing is the introduction of a smart card, and the smart card will enable people to store value, so to put value on the card, and then to use the card for traveling around the system. Labor believes that there can be benefits from change. But if we're going to have change, it needs to be on the basis that the government has addressed the cost-benefit issues and has addressed the legitimate privacy concerns of Australians. So far it's failed to address either. In relation to cost-benefit, it claims there will be saving of the order of $3 billion over 10 years, but it refuses to release the assumption on which that claim is based. So it simply expects Australians to take it on trust. One of the drawbacks of staying with the same organisation is that the person may get stuck doing the same job year after year. In some cases, this can lead to boredom and disillusionment. Moving from one organization to another can be a strategic decision in order to have variety and acquire a range of skills and experience. The person may be incredibly knowledgeable in a range of fields by working in different organizations. For many developed countries, the 1980s was a time when the switch from traditional heavy industries and manufacturing to services and information-based enterprise was completed. This led to widespread changes in employment patterns in these countries, as well as having profound social effects. In fact, it isn't going too far to say that there was a basic transformation in the whole culture, which can still be observed today.
I think that's not going to be such a a viable option for Cerberus. But, uh, that may be the way that they're going to approach it. Private equity, of course, is supposed to have the advantage of taking uh, management out of the spotlight of uh, quarterly profits uh, and industry analysts and and uh, prying shareholder eyes. And that, hypothetically, gives them a chance to take uh, slower, more patient routes to doing something to turn a company around. I would, uh, I would hope, and I have some, I guess optimism that some of the Cerberus team will have some creativity and imagination. Some years ago, Bjorn Lomborg, a young Danish statistician, published a book called The Skeptical Environmentalist. It became a bestseller and generated a lot of heat. Lomborg was attacked, abused and accused of all manner of things, not because he denied the fact of global warming, in fact, he affirmed it, but because, on his analysis, the devil and, he says, a lot of deviousness was contained in the details presented concerning the size of the problem and what were the most responsible steps to take in the face of global warming. So, what is quantum mechanics? Even though it was discovered by physicists, it's not a physical theory in the same sense as electromagnetism or general relativity. In the usual hierarchy of sciences, with biology at the top, then chemistry, then physics, then math, quantum mechanics sits at a level between math and physics that I don't know a good name for. Basically, Quantum mechanics is the operating system that other physical theories run on as application software, with the exception of general relativity, which hasn't yet been successfully ported to this particular OS. Welcome to Takeaway Science, another in the series of short podcasts produced by BLAST at the Open University. Now be warned, there is more than a hint of chemistry in the three sequences that make up this particular podcast. Later on, we will catch up with Ian Baines, a student studying molecular sciences with the Open University, then OU chemistry professor, Peter Taylor, gets to tell us about his involvement with OU Science Broadcasting on the BBC. But first of all, I am going to talk with another OU chemistry academic, Dr. Sotiris Misilidis, about his research into cancer, but I started off by asking Sotiris what his research involved. Giorgio Vasari was an accomplished painter and architect, but it is for his illuminating biographies that he is best remembered. He traces the development of Italian art across three centuries to the golden epic of Leonardo and Michelangelo. Great men and their immortal works are brought vividly to life, as Vasari depicts the young Giotto scratching his first drawings on stone, Donatello gazing at Brunelleschi's crucifix, and Michelangelo's painstaking work on the Sistine Chapel harassed by the impatient Pope Julius II.
This multi-million selling internet book is still the ultimate handbook for novices and experts alike. It's written in plain English. It covers everything from getting online for the first time to news feeds. This fully revised guide covers all the latest sites and crazes. Whether you've never sent an email or you just want to keep up with the latest developments, this is the book for you. Here, at last, was a base from which this largest ocean in the world could be further explored. Many questions were still unanswered. How large was the ocean? And how many undiscovered lands did it hold? Way out in the ocean, not far from Tahiti, did there lie a mysterious continent? Surely, if it existed, it would be inhabited, perhaps densely inhabited. This week we're going to be continuing our discussion of women in society. Last week we looked at a number of issues relating to women in education. If you remember, we discussed women both at school and at university. Today we're going to be considering the roles that women play in the workplace. Again, we'll start by taking a historical perspective, and inevitably you'll find that many of the same events that impacted on women in education also had a major influence on their working lives. In the second half of the lecture, I'll concentrate on the situation in Europe today, and I'll invite you to suggest how you think things are likely to develop over the next decade. Okay, so let's get started. An important question about education is then, why do some types of students achieve success easily and others struggle to do well? Well, one theory is that there is a genetic reason for academic achievement. What I mean by that is a certain innate measurable level of intelligence. Another frequently discussed theory is environmental factors such as the effect of home and family upbringing. A final reason is related to the teaching and learning process within educational institutions and the way it is organized, administered and assessed. To be honest, the biggest problem for most undergraduate students, in terms of academic writing, is not only adapting to a far more structured and formal style, but also learning how to ascertain the difference between important, valid information and unnecessary or even irrelevant material. In my experience, I would say it takes students their first year, if not longer to appreciate what is required and to start to implement those requirements in their writing. What they really should be doing, if they are struggling with written assignments, is to seek help from the excellent support services which are available at the university. So the phone company designed phones for use globally with this added feature. Ethnographic research has also been carried out in computer companies. In one company, IT systems administrators were observed for several weeks. It was found that a large amount of their work involved communicating with colleagues in order to solve problems, 
but that they didn't have a standard way of exchanging information from spreadsheets and so on. So the team came up with an idea for software that would help them to do this. In February 2016, as infection moved rapidly through the range occupied by Aedes mosquitoes in the Americas, WHO declared that Zika infection associated with microcephaly and other neurological disorders constituted a public health emergency of international concern. By the start of February 2016, local transmission of Zika infection had been reported from more than 20 countries and territories in the Americas and an outbreak numbering thousands of cases was underway in Cabo Verde in Western Africa. The Brazilian educator and influential theorist Paulo Freire has convinced me that scholarship is a dialogical process. According to Freire, the contributions of one scholar have no meaning if they stand alone the value of any work becomes apparent only when that work dialogues with the work that has gone before. For this reason, we do literature reviews. For this reason, we include in our manuscripts an implications section. So we're talking about ideal hotels. What do you think is an ideal hotel for you? That's a tough question but when I choose a hotel I would look at where the hotel's located. Right. And also the food. So as long as the hotel is surrounded by nature, you know, preferably on the water. Okay. And maybe some mountains in the back and if the food, the breakfast and dinner and all the food that they have is amazing, I'm good, I'm set. Now what about facilities? I mean, you know, hotels have various facilities whether it's gyms or movie rooms or computer rooms that allow you to do, you know, internet and various things. You know some hotels have pools. Would those be things that you would want in your ideal hotel? One seminal difference in policy remains. The coalition has not matched. What is labor's most important innovation promise? That is to bring together responsibilities for innovation, industry, science and research under one single federal minister. Innovation responsibilities currently lie within the powerful Department of Education and Science, and while there is a separate industry department, it has little influence within cabinet. This has hampered policy development and given Australia's innovation policies a distinctly science and research bias. It is the scientists rather than the engineers who call the tune in innovation policy in Canberra, so it's no surprise our policies are all about boosting government-funded research and later commercializing their results. Milk production, i.e. lactation, is a major component of reproduction in mammals. In contrast to all other animals, mammals including primitive mammals, such as the duckbill platypus and the spiny anteater nourish their offspring with a liquid that is secreted by specialized glands. Milk production and secretion are complex, multi-stage processes that are controlled by several hormones, the most important of which are prolactin and oxytocin.
there are few studies on research training programs within the realm of Asian American health disparities. The existing literature on training programs tends to emphasize broad components such as mentorship and an examination of the community and academic partnership. Moreover, the current available literature pertains mostly to clinical practitioners, such as nurses and doctors in residency rather than researchers. Few articles employed quantitative evaluation methods, because most of these evaluations were limited to a low number of participants. Group-based microfinance schemes attempt to harness the collective power of mutual support with members pooling their savings and making small loans to each other so that they can set up small businesses. Most aim to improve the economic power of and employment opportunities for women in their immediate community and many aims to confront ingrained discriminatory attitudes to women. Some aim to facilitate the attendance of girls at school and change attitudes to the paid employment of women outside their homes. Text doesn't capture a person's interest immediately in the same way that images do. Interesting scenery. Groups of people. Animals. Instructional photos. All of these can help keep someone on your blog long enough for them to be engaged by your writing. If you use relevant images, they can also help signal the content of your post to a reader. This helps them decide right away whether the post is right for them. Since there's so much free and legal content available, you should be using images in every post.